All right, so I'm attempting to salvage a couple of specimens. This is a Jamesonite from Fraser's Minerals. It's a really old specimen. It's been in the storage unit for many years, many, many years. And you can see it's pyrite with some Jamesonite on it. And uh, I'm really gonna, you can see it's just crumbling. It's got what's called pyrite's disease. So we're going to try and salvage it. I don't think it's gonna be salvageable. I think when I put it in the water, it's just gonna crumble. But we're going to attempt because it's such a great specimen. So I've got some hot water in here, and it's just sink water, and uh, with a very specific measurement of bleach, it was two glop, glops, so that's exactly how much bleach to put in there. A glop is a very specific scientific term. And uh, I'm just going to set this in here, and let it sit. Uh, we did a marker site a few minutes ago, and it completely just turned the water this, this weird color, uh, brown. Uh, almost like slimy stuff in there instantly. So we shouldn't see a whole lot happen. We're just gonna let it sit there and we're gonna let it go for about 15 minutes and uh, then we'll come back. So pyrite's disease is a name given to certain types of pyrites. Uh, it can be just about any pyrite, although I've noticed that the more crumbly, friable type pyrites tend to fall apart easier. And it's this pyrite disease that gets in there. It's a bacteria that actually eats the pyrite. And uh, I'm not exactly sure of all the, the scientific details of it, but uh, it just completely disintegrates and, and eats and dissolves away pyrites and marcosites. So this was one, one full specimen. It was really big. In fact, there's even a few more pieces that are missing. And uh, in the bottom of the box, it was just crumbly, eaten away, uh, dissolved pyrite and marcosite. I've already thrown all that part away. Um, some of the dust there. But here you can see in this one, I'm going to take, this has got it really, really bad. This is a calcite on pyrite. You can see that it's got the pyrite, but that also used to all be pyrite crystals along the bottom of that. And this is from, uh, I can't read without my glasses. So, no, there it's from Mexico. All the pyrite is dissolving away. This one is completely lost. It's uh, this pyrite, marcosite, uh, oh, it's epitaxial, meaning that the marcosite grew over the top of the pyrite. But uh, you can see that what was once a nice specimen is now just a box of rubble. So you can see that it's not as bad, but you can see this brown, I don't know what to call it, sludge. It's almost like algae growing that's uh, coming off of there, some kind of plume. This one doesn't have it too bad, but it was in the boxes with the other ones, so I'm just treating it with the bleach just to make sure. All right, so this is one I've already done. You can see the amethyst crystals here. They were attached, and there's some of the pyrite, to all this pyrite. It was, it was all attached on the bottom here. And when I picked it up, it all just crumbled. There was probably three or four times that amount of pyrite that just fell off and crumbled away. So we're trying to salvage these and I can display them with it. So, so this is a great pyrite specimen. I think we have salvaged this one. It's, uh, only time will tell. If I start to see any more uh, crumbs coming off of it, we'll retreat it. But uh, this is a pyrite, a peridohedron. Uh, it's actually a diploid, uh, which is even a modified peridohedron, and this is from the Ontario mine in Park City. All right, coming back to the Jamesonite, we're kind of giving a little clean. You can see it's shedding stuff like crazy. Um, hopefully we salvaged the best of them, but it's still just coming apart. I might uh, give them a little bit of a glue coating to help hold them together, but you can see the brown crust. I don't think that has anything to do with the bacteria. I think that has everything to do with just the uh, the uh, iron sulfides dissolving. I don't know that that's salvageable. A scientifically measured, this is a scientifically measured amount of bleach. It's called a gulp. Gulp, gulp. Probably the equivalent of about a cup.
All right, so we, unfortunately we can see even the large crystals on this one are falling off and uh, due to the pyrite disease and it's, it's all this crumbly stuff here on the bottom. We're gonna try and salvage it. So this is just bleach water. Our kitchen officially smells like a swimming pool. And here's the one with the calcite on top of the pyrite and the box full of uh, crumbs. I'm just going to set that down in there. And you can see the, uh, the color discoloration coming right off of that calcite one. Boy, it's coming off fast too. This is after just a few minutes. You can see the plumes of, it looks like algae. It's not like, like a semi-solid. It's not just a, a cloud. It's, it's like algae coming up through there. Some kind of reaction with the sodium hypochloride and the uh, iron sulfide. It's been another few minutes, so maybe uh, six to eight minutes total in here. I'm gonna take it out. That one doesn't seem to be reacting too much, so we're just going to give it a little rinse. There's little tiny shards coming off of my fingers. I can feel them coming off little flakes. That will sit there and I'll keep rinsing it. This one, we're just checking it. It's been in there probably about 10 minutes. You can see all the gray along here, which I thought was pyrite, but it might not be. It might be something else. It's like arsenopyrite or marcosite. So it's just, you can see it's just coming off of my hands, just dissolving away. That's the bacteria eating it. So one of the problems that mineral collectors have is they start to see a little pile of shards coming off and dust coming off and they can see a little bit of deterioration happening to their, their pyrites or any sulfite actually and uh, they just leave it. They don't know what to do with it. They just think it's shedding. It's just sitting there vibrating and coming off in the cabinet and what's really happening is this bacteria is eating at it and it'll spread. It can spread from one to another. So if you have one in your cabinet, sulfite in your cabinet the, uh, that has the pyrite disease, it will spread to other specimens easily. So especially with contact, uh, if you're touching them and, and then handling the specimens, we'll do it that way. I don't know if it travels airborne. I don't know, but I know if you have one in a cabinet, you have a chance of them all developing it over time. So well, there it is all treated. And we'll see if that holds or if I have to do a second treating. I suspect it's going to take two or three. All right, so one of the causes of pyrite disease is just moisture. And when you get too much moisture, the moisture and oxygen will mix with the pyrite and it'll create sulfuric acid, which is a gas. It'll drift across to etched glass. I've seen it etched museum cabinet glass. Uh, boxes rotten, it ruins the boxes, rots them right out. Uh, so one of the things you can do, if it doesn't have the bacteria in it, is just simply heat it. And you don't know. So I always double treat. So we did the bleaching already, and now I've got these ones soaking, or soaking, roasting like chestnuts to dry them out. You can't let it do too much or too long or you'll still ruin the specimens, you'll over oxidize them. So. so there you go and then these are the little desiccant packs. If you buy a pair of shoes or some foods you get the vitamins, these little packets come in them. I buy them in bulk by the thousand so you can get them from Uline. <clears throat> They're pretty cheap. They're uh, I think this case is like fifty dollars for a thousand. So what are you gonna do with those? There we go. And now I'm going to put these in boxes. I can't pick it up because it's hot. So I'll put it in a little box with one of these desiccants on it around it. You don't break these open, just leave them sealed. They work through the through their wrapper. And uh, just put it in there and we'll let it go. And if I start to notice a burn in the bottom of the box or if it starts to decay, then I know that it didn't work and I can try it again.
but honestly, if, if it doesn't work the first time, the second time may or may not, but it's going to just fall apart anyway. So these ones was, this was a plate about that big when we started, when we got it. And uh, these are the only two pieces that are left. The rest of it is in a pile of crumbles. It would be all this, plus a bunch that I already threw away because it was just dust. All right, so here I have baked these for a little over two hours, just in the toaster oven here in the kitchen. I let them cool so that they're not very hot now. I'm just gonna take them out and uh, set them aside. This one clearly is still struggling. And uh, you can see some of the oxidation, some of this gray on there is still oxidation. I think uh, it needs another acid bath. So I'm not gonna seal that one with the uh, WD-40. This one, oh, nope, see this one's got oxidation here too. So I'm gonna re-acid bath these. That gray on there is still where it's, it's uh, being attacked. So those two are the Marcosites. Those are from Mexico, really good ones. This was one that had just all but turned into rubble. Uh, and, uh, and now it seems to be very stable. So I'm just gonna give a little WD-40. And yes, I just do this in the house. All right, here's the big one that went to the other uh, amethyst. I'm just gonna coat it really well. Um, like I said earlier, the, uh, the bigger crystals don't seem to be attacked as easily as the fine grain stuff. So some people will actually get uh, by the WD-40 by the gallon and just put it in a tub and just let them soak. I'm just gonna do this and I'll probably do it a couple of times. I'm pretty sure this is gonna fix these. So, okay. WD-40 is uh, one of those things that, uh, it's, a, it's a weird chemical. Um, it absorbs and displaces water. And there's a name for that, I just can't think of it right off the top of my head. So it's going to absorb the water and, and then displace it. That's why it works so good for removing rust off of uh, locks and chains and tools. And it's soaking in pretty good on this one. So. Yeah, some of it's still coming off. Oh, that's a nice big crystal that came off. That's that one separate. Alright. Well, thanks for watching everybody. Our kitchen now smells of WD-40.